Hey, everybody. Hi. Hi, I'm Ted. I'm Mac, and uh, tall fellow over here, that's Brig. Uh, before we get started, I just want to ask everybody one quick question. Who out here has tried to sell a great creative idea? Anyone? All right, good. More Brother. than that, come on. More, There's got to be some good ideas out there. Ted, I mean, you know. But the rest of you are going to learn something that these people already know. Selling a great idea is difficult, very difficult. Yeah, Mac and I have been trying to sell ideas for a lot of years now, and we actually have an amazing track record of getting our ideas killed. Yep. <laughs> uh, we're good at that. We're probably some of the best in the business yeah. of getting our ideas killed. Uh -huh. And uh, so as, you know, through the years, as, as we've watched our little idea babies and uh, marched them off to the idea slaughterhouse, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we, we picked up uh, a, a new approach that uh, has helped us and might help you get your big idea off the ground. Yeah, because the world is full of experts, experts who know all the rules, they have all the experience, and they know all of the secret formulas. Screw mm -hmm. those guys. And screw them, yeah. yeah. The world doesn't need more experts. The world needs beginners. Yeah. People who are willing to go in uncharted territory where experience doesn't matter because it's never been done before. Yep. It needs, you know, we need more thinkers, makers, doers, inventors, reinventors, risk takers. People that will succeed because they don't know that they can't. Yeah. Because beginners are really great at one thing. We're good at getting started and we're terrible at giving up. We're going to do all the hard work and we're going to do what it takes to get things done. So the number one way to sell a great idea, mm -hmm. don't sell it. Don't ask permission from the experts. Don't ask permission from anyone. Just go out and make it. Yeah, because progress is being democratized. Used to be cool things would happen in New York or LA, but now with the technology, things can happen pretty much anywhere. And that's a lesson that we learned right here in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah, yeah. we had a great idea. We had an idea that we thought could change the music industry. Uh -huh. uh, but actually, that, that's not even the most interesting part that we want to tell you today. The interesting part is how two massively unqualified people massively. made that idea happen. Yes. Because fortune, well, sometimes she favors the naive, and when it comes to the music industry, we were just about as naive as it gets. Yep. I've been a musician a long time, and I've played a lot of shows, but I've never played a show like this before. A grassroots movement to bring one of the biggest rock bands in the world to the River City. The Foo Fighters have agreed to play a concert in Richmond, The Foo Virginia. Fighters haven't been to RVA in 15 years. But be this there. isn't your average concert. This show is completely organized and funded by fans. Now, the last time we played Richmond, Virginia was 1998, I think. So this dude and his friends started this campaign to have us come to Richmond. Just decided, like, you know what? If they're not going to come here, I'm going to make them come here. Two months ago, we told you about this group of Richmonders selling tickets to a concert that doesn't exist. And he made some, like, YouTube thing or a Facebook page or something like that. He says, I want to sell 1,500 tickets to a concert that doesn't even exist. Fans raised $70,000 to buy $70,000 worth of tickets to a concert that didn't even exist. What we sold people was a completely made-up fake concert. Well, get this. It worked. Richmond, Virginia, what the fuck is up? You guys need this, we want to thank you. So we walked out on stage, dude. They were cheering so loud. They were going, ah. so Our road crew were holding their ears, man, because they were so appreciative. Like, it was the people that brought the band. Well, then some guy in Birmingham, England, is like, okay, I'm going to do it. He meets his goal in four days. The guy in Cornwall does it. Actually, someone in Australia is doing it right now. For the last 20 years, we've always decided where we're going to play. But now it's like, if we hear that people want us to come somewhere, then, I don't know, maybe we'll come there. It changes the game. <laughs> yeah. So... When you watch this, you know, it's professionally edited case study video, it all seems so obvious, right? It seems so inevitable. It's like, of course people gave us $70,000 for this dumb idea we had at Burger Batch on a Wednesday. Yeah, and of course the biggest rock and roll band in the world disrupted their entire tour to come play in our town. I mean, yeah. yeah. Of course, you know, Huffington Post uh, put Richmond as the, uh, on, their, on their cities to watch list after this concert. Mm -hmm. And 
of course, Dave Grohl said that we four knuckleheads changed the music industry forever. Yeah. Yeah. Of, of course, that uh, you know, after this concert, there were copycat concerts on every continent around the world. Mm -hmm. But when we were doing this, we were in the middle of it. It kind of didn't feel like it was going to happen so well. In fact, it felt like it was going to be kind of impossible. Yeah. yeah. It's because when you try new things, there's going to be a whole line of experts standing in your way telling you no. Mm -hmm. There's going to be well-meaning, smart people with a ton of experience. But they're going to have all these charts and graphs saying, you know, your idea, while extraordinary, mm -hmm. it's just not how things are done. Yeah. You know, I'm going to play devil's advocate. Yeah. And what experts know can hurt them. Yeah. Because at first, we went through all the proper channels. We looked into you know, insurance, permits. I even looked into how many porta potties you would need to have for a concert of 70,000 people at Browns Island. The answer, 14. There you go. Yeah. 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 It's true. Yeah. It's all you need. We, we asked permission, and we got a resounding no from everyone we asked. Mm -hmm. You know? And it, it's because they, they said, you guys, you just don't have the logistical support to pull something like this off. You guys aren't concert promoters. You guys actually know nothing about the music industry. Yeah, and they were absolutely right. So we gave up. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, we said, this idea, like so many of our ideas, it's cool, but we're just not going to be able to get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. So we bummed around for a few weeks. We got depressed. Yeah. I ate a lot of chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and then we got together one night, and we're like, you know what? Forget, Forget this. this. Forget this, 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 this. We're yeah. going to do this yeah. without, with, without permission. We're going to do this with, without insurance, without music promoters, mm -hmm. with, with, without venues, yeah. without porta potties. None. <laughs> exactly. You know, we, we realized we were putting on a rock and roll concert yeah. in the most un rock and roll way possible. Yeah. yeah. So we thought, all right, we need to get the creative control and all the elements we can get back into, into our hands, mm -hmm. and we're going to do this on our own terms. Yeah, so we called our friend Lucas, we made a video, we got out there, we put up posters, flyers, we chalked sidewalks. Realized that the most important thing for us to do was actually just to get started. That was it. Yeah, it's because when, you know, running, the hardest part about running isn't, isn't running. Yeah. It's putting on your running shoes. Mm -hmm. It's getting out of the door. But then once you get started, other people start to catch that vision that, you, that you've built for them, and they start to join in, and then you gain momentum. And then those experts who kept telling you no, all of a sudden, they, they, they smile and they, they laugh and they say, I, I can't believe that's working. And then they get behind it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Because, I mean, with today's technology, making the impossible possible is easier now more than ever before. And that's what we were able to do. Yeah. So everybody, take, take a second and look yeah. around. Everybody look around. In this room right now, there are hundreds, of not, if not thousands, of great back pocket ideas right here. that are just waiting for the go-ahead from the powers of B. Stop waiting. Our challenge to you mm -hmm. and to ourselves yeah. for, for all our endeavors going forward is to take that idea out of your back pocket, yeah. get the, the creative control back into your hands, and never ask permission from anyone. That's right. Get out there. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You. Yeah.